actually already did 6-3 before. It was in previous chapter. Um, I don't remember which one, but... Um, so that was the one where we said um, if we wanted to, de instead of just saying, um, you know, something is graphed by x and y direction, we said that both of them are going to move with time. And the time we call t. So in the x direction, it's moving according to time, and y direction is moving according to time. Then both of them are defined with this new uh, or additional variable and that variable is t and this is basically called parametric parametric means they're both in terms of something that is a parameter okay parameter is like changing the knob so they're both going to be affected if you change one knob okay so um like for example if i take a marker and Right now, it's time zero because uh, it hasn't started moving yet. But if I started throwing it and I said, where was it at time one, t equals one, one second, then you can say, well, at one second, x is this direction, y is this direction. So both of them are moving with time. Does that make sense? OK, so let's say that for some equation, it has these two things. X is according to t squared minus 2. So where x is, is time squared minus 2. And then where y is at that time is 3t. We're going to figure out how this curve looks like from negative 3 to 1. Okay, so since both of them are according to t, uh, we want to figure out how that looks like by um, kind of taking out that variable in a way. So t is my pair parameter, and then I have two other variables that's according to t, so x of t and y of t. And t goes from, for part a, it goes from negative 3 to 1. And x and y are going to depend on t. So when x, uh, sorry, when t is negative 3, when t is negative 3, what is x? 7. Seven. t squared minus 2. OK. When t is negative 3, what is y? Negative 9. It's really simple. The, the math is not hard. It's just trying to understand why you do what you do. So both x and y are depending on t to move. And x and y means the places in my 2D space. And t is some external factor, time, that you cannot graph. Right? You can't really graph this on the same axis. So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out the time and then plug it in so we can figure out what x, y are. All right, let's try another one. So when t is negative 2, what is x? 2. two. And then when t is negative 2, what is y? Negative 6. Negative six. And then so we're going to go ahead and finish that chart. And then we're going to plot, plot, bleh, plot it um, on this graph. And this graph is only x and y. OK, did you guys get the same numbers? Yeah? OK, now what you're going to do is you're going to plot them on the graph. So for example, at t equals negative 3, it's 7, negative 9. Uh, I drew my lines too low. Okay, 7, negative 9. Mm, 7, oh. Okay. 7, negative 9. Okay, 7, negative 9 is right there, and this is t equals negative 3. 
So if you kind of think of it as a time, uh, something moving with time. So at time equals negative three or negative three seconds, whatever that unit is, uh, that thing is at seven, negative nine. Okay, at negative two, it is two, negative six. So at time equals negative two, uh, the position is two, negative six. And then so on. So go ahead and finish graphing this. Everyone's good, kind of. If you were to connect this with a curvy line, how would you do it? What kind of shape would you kind of suspect this is? Yes, it is a parabola. If we had enough points, it would look like a parabola. Now you want to be able to figure out that this is a parabola without actually um, graphing it. So what we're gonna do is we're going to do this thing called uh, eliminating the parameter, meaning that we don't want to write this equation. So if you look at these two equations, there are three variables, right? X, Y, and T. We want to get rid of T so that it's X in terms of Y or Y in terms of T, uh, X. So we want to write this equation in, in the form of X in terms of Y or Y in terms of X. We just don't want T in there. Okay, the, the equations all have t right now. So how do I write this so that I can get rid of t? What can I do to get rid of t? Uh huh. So what we can do is change this. So t is equal to y divided by 3, and then what? Yes. So. We can use substitution. If we substitute in terms of uh, t equals something, then it will get rid of that t entirely. So if we did that and we plug it in, um, then x is equal to t is y over 3. So this is going to be y over 3 squared minus 9. So that is y squared over 9 minus 9. So we have an x equation that's only in terms of y. There is no uh, t in there. OK? And if we look at that equation, x equals y squared over 9 minus 9. If you kind of recall from last year, y squared, having a square, only one square, that tells me it's a parabola. x equals the equation tells me it's a left and right parabola. Yes? It's positive, so that tells me it's pointing towards the right. Negative 9 means that it has a vertex at 0, negative 9. And if we look at our, uh, I'm sorry, not 0, negative. Negative 2, did I write it wrong? Oh, I'm sorry, negative 2. So it tells me that there's a vertex at 0, negative 2 which is correct. That's how my parabola looks like. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to get that same parametric graph on your calculator. So everyone, please take out your calculator and we're going to explore the mode of parametric functions. So if you go to your calculator and you go to the mode part, the, this is where you change from radian to degrees, that part. If you go to mode on your calculator, you're gonna see a bunch of things. So uh, the third thing that you see is radian to degree. So, you know, uh, we did that before. The fourth line, you have four, uh, four uh, choices. F-U-N-C means function. That's the like normal Y equals something, something. P-A-R, this is where we wanna be today. This is parametric. And the third one is P-O-L. P-O-L means polar. We're going to do that later on in this chapter. And then the last one, S-E-Q, is what we're going to do in chapter 9, sequences. So for now, we're just going to go to P-A-R, 
So press enter, and it's going to highlight PAR. And when we do that, uh, when you go back to Y equals, it's no longer Y equals something. It's now in terms of X1 T and Y1 T. So you have two equations in terms of T, okay, in terms of this parameter T. So what you're going to do now is plug in the equation that we were working with at the beginning, t squared minus 2 and y equals 3t. Since you're in parametric mode, if you go to the, the button where you usually get all your variables, x, t, theta, n, x is the variable you use for functions, t is the variable you use for parametric, theta is the variable you use for polar, and then n is the a variable you use for sequences. So if you just press that button now, it will automatically just say T instead of X because you're in parametric. And then, so what you're gonna do now is X1 T, you're going to enter T squared minus two, and then X Y1 T, you're gonna put in three T. Now you're gonna graph. Um, if you press trace now, I'm not quite sure what's going to happen because it depends on what mode you were in, like your window set before. So what we're going to do now is we're going to graph exactly uh, this one here from negative 3 to 1. From negative 3 to 1. So what you're going to do is actually change it. So go to window. If you go to the window button, are you guys all kind of... If you have any questions, please let me know or ask someone next to you. Okay, if you go to the window button right now, you're going to see... Whoa. You're going to see T min. T min means what is the lowest T that you want to graph? And we said negative 3. So you're going to change that to negative 3. If you're going to put negative, please use the negative button, not the minus button. All right, T max. T max we said is one. T step. T step means um, how often do you want this to be graphed? You want it to be graphed every one step, like T equals one, or T equals 0.5, or what is it? So basically your interval size. Um, I don't know. Uh, the, the, the bigger gap you make it, the less points you're going to have. Does that make sense? It's going to look rough. Uh, the, the smaller you make it, you get a smooth curve, but it takes your calculator longer to figure it out because you have too many points. So it's up to you uh, what you want to do. Um, and then it has X min, X max. That's just the window range. Um, it looks like we should at least go from negative 5 to what's my maximum X? Like maybe 10, negative 5 to 10. So we can see at least most of it. And then y min, y min, uh, my lowest number is negative 9, and highest number is 3. So, you know, maybe you want to go from negative 10 to 10, something like that. Yeah. And then this graph, you should see a parabola. Oops, I forgot to type in. Yes, any questions? You guys got it? Anyone who don't have a graph? <laughs> oh, I don't know how to change your calculator. <laughs> All right, let's try one where we just kind of figure it out on our own. So uh, basically all of these, you don't have, uh, you can, you know, basically graph uh, the parametric in your calculator. And then if you're trying to eliminate a parameter, you can figure it out, graph your new one that does not have T, but remember you got to go back to function and then check to see if they look the same. They should look the same if you got the correct equation. All right, let's try this one. We want to eliminate the parameter. So what should we do? We don't want T. You can write this in uh, x of t, uh, y or y of x. So uh, tell me what to do. Yeah, Luke looks like he's about to say something. Uh, subtract for y equals 2 minus t. Mm -hmm. Subtract 2 and then multiply by negative 1. 
Okay. All right. So t is equal to 2 minus 1. Then what? Substitute. Substitute this into this t. So x is equal to 1 minus 2 times 2 minus y. So this is 1 minus 4 plus y, which is y minus 3. x is equal to y minus 3. Did I do this wrong? Huh? Oh, I'm sorry, 2y minus 3. OK, so this is one way. Uh, what kind of shape is this going to be? Huh? Linear. It's just a line. And you can rewrite it as y, e y equals something something x is the same thing. All right, so this question says eliminate a parameter. We did that. Identify the graph. So this is a linear uh, or line. And use a graphing calculator to check. So you can do that later, but I'm just going to let you do that on your own time. We're just going to practice as many uh, of these as possible. OK, eliminate the parameter and identify the graph. Um, OK, what should we do? This is really similar to the other one. What do you want to do? Divide by 3 on y equals 3t. Good. So uh, t is y over 3. And then substitute. substitute, good, plug it in. Um, so x is equal to y over 3 squared minus 2. So this is y squared over 9 minus 2. So same thing as before. Now, can we do it the other way around? So let's say that we have the same question again, but this time I don't want to do, I don't want to change y first. Let's say that we change x first. Then we would have added 2 on both sides and then square root it. Is this correct? Plus minus. Yes, plus minus. OK, now we're going to plug it in here. So y is equal to 3 times plus minus square root of x plus 2. This is kind of awkward. So it's plus minus 3 square root x plus 2. All right, so let's talk about what happens if you don't have square root, uh, plus minus. When you have a square root graph, remember square root goes like this, the one-winged bird. If you don't have a plus minus, you will only have a plus version. So that's the one-winged bird. But this is actually a sideways parabola, so it needs the negative versions to create that parabola. Does that make sense? So make sure you do have that plus minus. All right, so this is a, uh, you can say a sideways parabola. All right, let's try another one. This one is a little bit crazy. x equals 2 cosine t, y equals 2 sine t. OK, we can't really use the same way we did with um, trying to get t by itself. So if we did, we would say y over 2 is equal to, uh, please don't write this down. I'm just showing it to you. This is the wrong way to do this. Uh, you probably do this, and then you said, I got to get t by itself, so I would have to do this. And then putting it in here, what is cosine of inverse sine? That gets really crazy. So please don't do it this way. We need to recall what we did last chapter. Sine and cosine. Sine and cosine at the same time. So if we said um, x squared plus y squared, then we're going to get x is 2 cosine t. So x squared is going to be 2 cosine t squared. y is 2 sine t, so y squared is 2 sine t squared. So x squared plus y squared is 4 cosine squared t plus 4 sine squared t. What do you notice about the equation on the right? I hope hopefully you realize something. Huh? Sine squared plus cosine squared sine squared plus cosine squared. If I just take out that 4, 
I get cosine squared plus sine squared. Cosine squared plus sine squared is 1. So this is going to be x squared plus y squared equals 4. x squared plus y squared equals 4 is what shape? Circle. Yes, it's a circle. So this is actually going to be a circle. If you graph this on the parametric uh, function, you should see a circle. Um, what is, where is the center? Zero zero. zero, zero. And then what's the radius? Two. Two. So some review from last year. And we're going to spend a whole chapter on conic section again. So. Anyways, so when you see sine and cosine, you need to kind of remember, ah, that sine squared plus cosine squared is going to give me that one I need to create this. Yes? Um, parameters? Parametric? Yeah, parametric. When we plug it in, do we have to put it in radian or degree? Uh, radian. Yeah, good question. 